My father was what would have been called a stalwart of our local parish church. He served on the church committee, the forerunner to today's parish council, took his turn on the rota for collection duties, faithfully attended the monthly men's confraternity and never missed the Monday night novena. He could be relied on for help with any special occasion being organised, especially at Christmas or during Lent or Easter. Then, his duty done, he slipped away quietly for a game of cards with his pals before heading home. Outwardly, he never said he was doing anything particular for Lent, giving up sweets or sugar in his tea. A swear word never crossed his lips, so he couldn't give that up. But still, my brothers and I always knew that he was doing something. Normally, he left for work every morning at about 8.30. During Lent, he left earlier to hear 8.30 Mass before going to work. Normally, after confraternity or the novena and perhaps a game of cards, he'd be home at about nine for the news on the television. During Lent it might be a bit later. I just stayed on to say a few extra prayers before the game, he'd say. He loved to play pitch and put, but I remember him saying one Saturday that no, I'll have a game tomorrow. I'm just calling to Josie second next door I told her I'd turn the veg patch in her garden for her and sure, I might as well do it today. I remember that because he asked me if I'd like to give him a hand with the dig. (laughs) When he saw me scowl, he laughed and said that I could offer it up for Lent. That was my dad's way of passing on to us the tradition of Lent that he himself had received from his father before him. A gentle expression of thoughtfulness for others a giving of his time and his talents for the benefit of his neighbour. For my father-in-law, Lent was a totally different experience. He was a show band leader. Throughout the year, huge crowds travelled to hear him play and dance the night away. Thousands bought his records, such as Cuando Salida de Cuba or Power Game. But for many years, during Lent, there was no dancing. And consequently, for he and his fellow musicians, no work, no money to feed their families. And so they travelled to England or America, where they brought the joy of Ireland to thousands of emigrants that now flocked to hear music from the homeland. At these dances, there was always a great sense of anticipation as the night came towards the end. The live rendition of Auron of Ian brought tears to many eyes. Before that, however, another piece, another anthem, always brought proceedings to a complete halt. The crowds, arrested in their revelry, gathered in front of the stage. The saxophone sounded the opening notes in solo. The bass guitar played the lead in, and singer Bobby sang the words that brought people to another land, another place, another time. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross, where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. My father-in-law told me he loved that piece. Although often far from home and family, it reminded him of Good Friday and Easter, and he played it as a prayer. For the thousands gathered before the stage, he could see that for them too, it was both memory and prayer. A few moments of reflection in the midst of a night of fun and revelry. For it was on that old cross, Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. Lent A time of memories, a time for reflection, a time for giving.